assalamu alaikum this is shamat uzara and today my topic of discussion is that what are the different surfaces of the heart and how we can find out the abnormalities on different surfaces of the heart in relation to uh, seeing the different lead ecg and uh, identify it so this is my main topic of discussion today and i have divided my video into two major parts for better understanding first part is in which i'll discuss that what are the different ecg leads and how they function what are the different leads and how they function and the second part then i'll discuss that different surfaces of the heart their abnormalities and which surface abnormality is seen on which lead of the ecg so this is my main topic of discussion today and f- uh, with it i start first is ecg leads now as we know that we have a 12 lead ecg ecg system okay in this we have three types of lead first are three bipolar limb leads then we have three unipolar augmented virtual leads and then we have six also unipolar chest leads so this is the whole system of 12 ekg leads as as we know already now now this question will come into your mind that what is bipolar and what is unipolar and why these are bipolar and why these are unipolar so just to clear that concept first of all what is pole poles are two ends two if this is a thing it has two ends suppose one is negative other is positive then this is called bipolar if it has two poles attached and unipolar is if it has only one pole either negative either positive okay now in this case we know that the bipolar limb leads they are attached in such a way that they have two poles means two parts of our body they are attached to the two different poles and as a result the current moves in that and the lead is formed okay but in unipolar leads and in unipolar leads now this is very important to uh, uh, put in your mind that this unipolar lead doesn't mean that it works on one single pole no it has two poles but the lead has only one pole in both these cases we imagine a center in our body called wilson center which is virtually imagined no lead is attached there we just virtually imagine it that that point is our negative terminal and then we uh, the other one one pole that the unipoles they are considered as positive terminal so don't worry i'll explain you in more detail but this was just an overview to difference of bipolar leads and unipolar leads okay now imagine suppose this is a human body and this is the right arm this is left arm this is right leg and this is the left leg okay now what we do is that of course we have two poles one negative pole and one positive pole so the now we're discussing first about the three bipolar leads they are lead 1 lead 2 and lead 3 okay now first of all talking about lead 1 in lead 1 we make the right arm of that person as the negative terminal and the left arm of that person as the positive terminal and then this lead is formed so the vector is always directed from negative terminal to the positive terminal and this is how the vectors move and this is the lead one and now we will connect this how it is negative it's not that we have put a negative thing here we have connected the wire attached here to the negative terminal of the galvanometer and this area to the positive terminal of the galvanometer so this becomes two poles so bipolar and this is the lead one the first chest lead okay uh, now to remember that now this question will come in your mind that which pole or which side we will consider as negative and which as positive so my teacher dr mean he explained in a very good way that you can remember the l's the two parts in comparison which part will have the more number of l's that will be considered as positive is just a mnemonic to memorize it so in considering right arm and the left arm the 
L is on the left arm, so we'll make this positive and this is the negative. So this is how the vector moves lead 1. Second is the lead 2. We make lead 2 by connect connecting right arm with the left leg. Now comparing these, evident is there are two L's on this side. So we'll make this, suppose this is the left arm. We'll make this pole positive and this pole negative. So the vector will move from right arm to the left leg negative to positive this is called lead 2 and now as we know that if our heart is placed here it also moves from SA node to the apex of the heart in the same direction so lead 2 is very important in identifying the major problems of the heart why because it, its axis is the same as the axis of our heart okay now comes the third bipolar lead that is lead 3 we connect left arm with the left leg this makes the lead 3 now in both now the left arm and left leg both have l's in it but comparable to l a l l has two l's so we'll again make this the positive and this now negative and from negative to positive this is how the lead will move so this is the lead 3 so these are the three bipolar leads. Lead 1, just a quick recall, lead 1 connecting right arm to the left arm from negative to positive, lead 1. Lead 2 connecting right arm to the left leg, negative to positive, this is the lead 2. Lead 3 connecting left arm to the left leg, negative to positive, this is its vector. So these are the three leads. Done. Next, we'll move on to the three unipolar augmented virtual leads. Now, these are called AV, AV leads. Why they are called augmented and virtual leads? Because their potential is higher, so they are augmented leads. Why they are virtual? Because virtual is imaginary. In that case, they are unipolar. One pole, which is the negative pole, we consider as an imaginary point and make vectors over it so this is basically a mathematical calculation you you have no need to go into it you just have to know the basic concept so what is that main point which we consider as negative from which we make these all nine unipolar leads talking about that point we imagine that suppose if this is a person's belly and this is its umbilicus and this is suppose its pubic symphysis. So between the umbilicus and the pubic symphysis, a center point is chosen that is called the Wilson's center, which is virtually considered as negative. Okay, so suppose this is somewhere that Wilson center, which is now negative. Now we know current move from negative to positive. We are now talking about the unipolar augmented virtual leads. We have three unipolar augmented virtual leads. So this is the left side. So from negative to positive, this is a lead called AV augmented virtual left arm lead. Okay then is from negative this wilson center to the right arm this is its vector direction negative to positive for th for this lead it's positive terminal here this is av augmented virtual right arm lead okay now from this negative to this positive downward this is augmented virtual foot lead now we don't write l here because this l and this l will be same so we name it augmented virtual foot lead avf so these three leads are now the unipolar augmented virtual leads why virtual leads because we have imagined the center in between just a quick recall of augmented virtual leads we have wilson center in a point considered negative in the center between the umbilicus and the pubic symphysis from there AVL moves from here towards the left arm, AVR towards the right arm, so here is the pole attached, positive pole, and AVF from here to the left leg, so these are the three leads. Now a common, uh, now we'll talking about, talk about the unipolar chest leads. These are starting from V1 to V6. Although we have three more lead extra, V7 to V9, which are considered as posterior chest leads, I'll talk to you in a while about them first talking about the v1 to v6 leads okay v1 to 6 suppose this is the person 
and we know of course ribs would be here on both sides this is the first intercostal space second intercostal space third intercostal space fourth intercostal space and this is the fifth intercostal space okay now in this imagine we have this sternum in between ignore my bad hand drawing but you can just imagine here now in the fourth intercostal space on the right side we attach the lead v1 on the left side is v2 same fourth intercostal space then in the suppose here is the clavicle and this is the mid clavicular point so mid clavicular line downward is v3 then is this suppose this is a patient arms and this is his axilla in the mid point of the axillary pit the line downward is the mid axillary line so anterior to it is the anterior axillary line here we attach the v4 then in the mid axillary line downward now in the fifth intercostal space we attach lead v5 and then behind it in the uh, posterior axil uh, no in the uh, mid axillary line we place lead v6 and here is lead v5 in the anterior axillary line and th this is all of all the leads okay i'll repeat this again v1 is present on the right side of the sternum in the fourth intercostal space v2 is present on the left side of the sternum in the fourth intercostal space then here in the same line is present the v3 v4 v5 and v6 v uh, v4 is also present here and in the mid clavicular line v5 is in the anterior axillary line fifth intercostal space v6 is in the mid axillary line uh, in the fifth intercostal space so these are the points of the five chest leads okay now we have three more chest leads which are v7 v8 and v9 now how we place them and normally we don't place them if we have to see the posterior side of the heart or we have to see any problem regarding the posterior descending artery then we'll prefer placing these three leads how we'll place these three leads these were the anterior leads so this is on the anterior chest of the patient now we'll place these leads on the back of the patient now where v6 was the mid axillary line in the posterior axillary line we place v7 lead same in this fifth intercostal space then v8 if this is the tip of if this is suppose scapula and this is the tip of the scapula proceeded downward there we place v8 and v9 now imagine this is the back of the person this is a scapula this is a scapula and this is his spine in the center so the left paraspinal line here we place the lead v9 these three leads in summary of the chest leads we have v1 which is placed uh, v1 v2 v3 v4 v5 and v6 i've uh, told you its positions before posterior chest leads v7 in the posterior axillary line v8 in the line which is made from the tip of the scapula proceeded downward and v9 is in the left paraspinal line why you we use these three leads not normally but if we have to see the posterior side of the heart 